Gillingham were their problems at the other end of the table. Before this match, just four points clear of the bottom four. So Grimsby versus Gillingham then. Commentary as usual from Martin Tyler. Bob Cumming is Grimsby's leading scorer with 16 goals, but this afternoon he's chosen to fill in at left back because Kevin Moore, sent off at Chesterfield last Saturday, is suspended. But Dave Moore, the younger of the two brothers, returns to the side at right back in place of John Stone, who was taken ill this week. George Kerr has had to delve deep into the resources of his small squad to announce this team. And at number nine, Kevin Drinkle starts the game, even though he's still troubled by a groin strain. It's a decision that allows another striker, Gary Little, more time to continue his rapid recovery from a broken leg. Gilliam recalled Damien Richardson, the Republic of Ireland international, in their attack. Richardson hasn't in fact scored since this weekend a year ago, and he's still waiting for the one goal, which will be his 100th for the club. After Gilliam's defeat at home to Chesterfield on Tuesday, their seventh game without a win, Jerry Summers has outlined his priorities as simply surviving in the third division. And his team selection today reflects that philosophy, with four players bolstering the middle of the field. The amenities at traditional league grounds, like Blundell Park, have been called into question this week by Ted Croker, the secretary of the Football Association. Parts of the stands here are 100 years old, and as Grimsby Town build a team for the future, the club is well aware that it must make similar progress in catering for spectators. Today's referee is David Richardson from Great Harwood, who in a fortnight's time takes charge of the Football League Cup final at Wembley. So the third division leaders kick off, playing from right to left in the black and white stripes. Gillingham today in a chain strip of all yellow. And Grimsby has won four out of their last five games. And it's Gillingham who's won only one in the last 14. Nigel Batch quickly off his line in the Grimsby goal. Gillian were in fact second favourites at the start of the season for promotion. Really have had a disappointing time to the surprise of a lot of people in football. Here's Ken Price for them. To Richardson. John Crabb. Coming, who's no stranger to the defensive role. And of course has been scoring so many important goals from the middle of the field for Grimsby. Cross from Sharp. Turned behind for the first corner of the game. A driven cross from the Gillian skipper. Billy Hughes to take it. Cumming gets it out. There's Hughes again. Be interesting to see how Grimsby react to this slightly reshuffled lineup. from the skill in this side which has been exhibited throughout the season there's a great deal of resilience and strength of character as well they held on to win at Chesterfield and they were down to 10 men in the last half hour last Saturday and here's Tony Ford to use his speed Kilmore and Drinkle are in the middle Tony Ford and he had a chance to use it then. Wigington beaten to it. Here's Crombie. Oh, 
at the nearest of contacts and Hilliard couldn't scramble it out. So Grimsby get the start they were looking for. And Gillingham, whose recent form has been so dispiriting for them, concede an early goal that they must have dreaded. George Kerr, the Tennessee manager on the left of the bench as we looked. David Booth, his assistant next to him doing the pointing. who met it for Grimsby and Duncan with a shooting chance Colin Duncan who is Gillingham's latest acquisition from Oxford United at the end of January still looking for his first goal for his new club it's an opportunity that came his way after Richardson had got a good flick on Waters with the first header and then Cumming could only get it down for Duncan who flashed the shot wide. It's Billy Hughes who's got the cut eye, who's had to go off for some temporary repairs. Gillian for the moment down to 10 men. Drinkle. Wigginton playing it without really looking and Price anticipating just that sort of move it was really a dangerous moment for Grimsby Nicely on from Ford then from Drinkle Steve Bruce, who play in the centre of the defence as well as in midfield. Play in the centre of the defence against Chesterfield on Tuesday for the team move forward today. Price turning sweetly away from Crombie. There's no real help arriving for him. Dave Moore wins it cleanly. Mitchell. Pass made for check. Waters takes over. Trying to find Kilmore, who's watched closely by Weatherly. Bab and Brolly. for Grimsby right across the face of the goal without the finishing touch from Tony Ford Moore waiting until Ford timed his run you can see how dangerous ball it was and Hilliard broken so Gilliam get their full complement back you can see the match above Billy Hughes' right eye Overton. Barker's header. Waters was late into the back of Brown. Overton with the free kick. Waters and Drinkle is onside. Kilmore up and 
so too was Broly. Here's Mitchell. Now coming. 20 men forward for Grimsby. Kilmore. All coming again. Just a little too tight for them. Ken Price leads the Gillingham's counter charge. Feet were high. First from coming. Richardson. Mitchell taking the sting out of a scrappy piece of play in the middle of the field. Jump by Drinkle. Mitchell allowed to go on as he then referee plays the advantage. Looking forward to get inside. Play the ball inside the fullback rather for Ford to collect. Ford wanted it played to his feet. Sharp with the throw. Duncan trying to get behind Ford. He may have succeeded. Ford gets back to concede the corner. For which Gillian bring forward Overton and Weatherly. Crab will carry it in with his left foot. Strongly by Batch. And Ford breaks forward for Grimsby. Here's Crab. Price couldn't get any power into the best effort really from Gillingham in this first half. And they responded quickly after Ford had in fact given the ball away. Brad drove it in and Price couldn't really connect. touch coming right at the end of the first half in which Grimsby go off leading by a goal to nil perhaps not totally satisfied with their performance Kevin Drinkle who just distracted goalkeeper Ron Hilliard to give Grimsby such a good start perhaps not playing at their best since then but so far so good for the third division leaders Grimsby Town 1 Gillingham nil. Welcome back to Blundell Park. Gilliam starting the second half. Still looking, in fact, for their first ever league victory on this ground. And they trail at half-time by the one goal scored by Kevin Drinkle in the seventh minute. Here's Drinkle. This time with a back pass. One wonders with this growing strain how long he'll stay on in the second half. Times well there to find Kilmer. It's been flashes in the first 45 minutes of the true Grimsby style. It's the passing at times suffered perhaps a little from the firmness of the ground. This pitch has been very wet through the winter months. The players were saying before the game that it was the driest they'd seen it for quite a while. It hasn't always bound to true for them. Drinkle's power in the air has been particularly important in recent matches. He struck a vein of goal scoring. And he wasn't too far away then. Kilmore coming off the near post. And Crowley! How did that stay out? It's a corner. And Mike Crowley may have been trying to control it. And nearly ended up scoring on the long throw that totally unsettled Gillian. There's Broly, and that's how close he came. With a long throw. Again, Grimsby doing well in the air. Sharp has to turn. 
came off Crombie. We'll go behind for the corner to Gilliam. in no position to relax yet in this game, Grimsby Town. Grabs corner, and that was Bruce. And that was so close, his batch complains. One of those teasing corners that John Pine has put over several times in this match. And Steve Bruce, climbing better than Mitchell, who was standing with him, and it drops just over the top. rather slicing the clearance sharp Duncan he's got pace and aggression and he's been allowed to run and he's left it for Hughes and deserved a better finish Colin Duncan with a real show of enterprise and Grimsby couldn't get a tackle in Duncan slightly overrunning it he could have taken it on himself but he saw that Hughes was there Hughes was wasteful. Price competing strongly. It was Richardson. Duncan right in there, and it's from the bar. And put away by Crombie, and what a let off for Grimsby. Colin Duncan, the unlucky Gillingham player, with a crisp header. Batch was caught by the run in front of him and it came out of the crossbar. So as if the warning signs weren't there before, a reminder for Grimsby. Hughes with the corner. Deep towards Bruce and that was the post! Now Price! And he saved it. Nigel Batch reacting quickly. Gillingham finding nothing going for a side who have been struggling so much in recent weeks. Bruce. And that might yet come for Ken Price. Rolly. And now Kilmore. Here's Ford. Running it straight at Barker. And Richardson offside. But really, what a remarkable series of events around Nigel Batch's goal. After Duncan had already hit the bar, from the corner, Steve Bruce with a header that rocketed off the post, and here's Price firing it back for Batch to pour to safety. Sean Moore stripped off, ready to come on, the substitute. Hughes. Price, and here's Duncan. Back for Bruce. Played for Sharp. And into the midriff of Nigel Batch. Again, the meekness in the Gillingham build-up finds a way through. Nice touch play. Bruce, an intelligent little ball there to give a better shooting chance for Sharp. And it's Kevin Kilmore who's coming off as Grimsby make their substitution. Sean Moore of the Moors here at Grimsby, but this one's spelled M-A-W-E-R. Comes on to the right-hand side of Grimsby's midfield, enabling Ford to push forward in Kilmore's place. Here is Ford in his more advanced role, beaten in the air by Weatherly. So you have the throw. Coming back to Brolly. Space ahead of Bob coming. Ford. Now coming is caught. Needing cover. 
Conley was across. And anyway, Price had gone offside. Ken Price, who cost Gillingham only £2,000 from South End, would be worth more than £100,000 now in today's market prices. Wigginton, there's Drinkle for Sean Moore. Substitute is down injured. And it looks like the right knee. Back's being urged to put it out by players and crowd alike. And he finds what's in rugby parlance might be called a good touch. Which enables John Fraser, the Grimsby physiotherapist, to come on and attend to Sean Mark. One recalls the unfortunate incident in the last round of the cup when John McCall of Wolves came on a substitute only to break a leg within seconds. One hopes it's not as serious as that for Sean Moore. Certainly a painful introduction to the thick of a battle, and a battle it is for Grimsby Town. The painkiller being sprayed on. further attention with quarter of an hour remaining well, the anxiety transmitting itself to the Grimsby Town management George Kerr has been up on his feet and passing on what he wants from them in the next quarter of an hour or so and they're still down to ten men here's Golly victim and a match which has not been dirty at all but no quarter has been asked or given in the tackles and Grimsby with this small squad desperately need to keep players fit for the run-in Waters fighting it in and Iliad again although being fouled he's going for the cross with any conviction Pressure from Drinkle. Really floated forward by Waters. Just watch the goalkeeper who had an eye on the man coming in. And it was Drinkle. And it's strapping being applied to Sean Moore's right knee. before the game started so he wonders how he's coping in these final few minutes Brolly's limping Sharp and there's Mitchell there's a cool head a cool flick from Waters Drinkle stabbing it forward and he got a bang as well goes on past him. Julian must really sense an opportunity now. John Sharp, bitterly disappointed with his cross. But the cheers go up because Sean Moore has come back onto the field. Plainly all is not right with him. But he's going to lend what help he can. Well, one's really got to admire the courage of Sean Moore. But whether long-term 
damage will result from him staying on. Only time will tell. Price is offside. Jerry Summers calling for more effort, but it's been so frustrating for him this afternoon. Woodwork having been hit by his side twice. Drinkle running willingly up front, but it's cut out by Overton. Wally nicks it back. Prepared to take men on. And nicely guided down by Drinkle for four. Drinkle again going in, and Walter! It's wide! When that could have finished it. Wally had set it up, a delicious little touch there from Kevin Drinkle. And Ford returning the compliment with a deep cross. Drinkle knocked it down and Waters stretching followed just wide. Richardson almost making something there. Out from Mitchell. Steve Ford forward from Hughes. Here's Damien Richardson. Who is offside. And he cannot believe it. with a highly sophisticated sense of humour, Damien Richardson, but he couldn't see the funny side of that. And Nigel Batch has been penalised for taking too many steps. And so Grimsby face a crisis of their own making. Flips it in, and up goes Weatherly, but the whistle is gone. The goal doesn't count. The referee hadn't signalled for the free kick to be taken. Mark Weatherly put it in. And it's back with Hughes again. What drama. Hughes again, Weatherly again poised for his run. This time Duncan's shot is blocked. Barker as Grimsby push out. And the ball drops into Batchie's arms. Well, who'd be a football manager? George Kerr, at least his side are winning. And Jerry Summers on the Gillingham bench has seen all sorts of frustrations. Frustration to end with Grimsby Town hanging on, showing their character and ability to withstand uh, problems and they were reduced really to 10 effective players. Sean Moore there with that stuffing around his right knee. But it's a win that keeps Grimsby Town at the top of the third division. Sean Moore carried off and George Kerr goes into the dressing room really to count the cost of the victory by the solitary goal that came early from Kevin Drinkle. Final score at Brundle Park, Grimsby Town 1, Gillingham 0. So Grimsby Town then perhaps just a little bit fortunate to collect both points uh, from that game, but the league table doesn't show that. The league table now shows that Grimsby are out in front clear on their own, and that of course as far as they're concerned is the important thing. We'll take a look at the top of the Division 3 table in just a few minutes, but uh, after the game I spoke with a fairly relieved Grimsby Town manager, George Kerr. George, you seem to have less hair than you did before the match <laughs> when we were chatting. You must have aged a bit in the last few minutes of that game, I would think. Yeah, well, I've been losing it since I was age 29, so I can't, bl I can't blame that game for it. But, uh, you know, at the end, the result was the right res result for us and uh, the right result for the people of Grimsby. And uh, really, that's my answer to everybody who thought it was a poor game. It is a result that counts, of course, obviously in your position. But what about that last-minute free kick of Gillingham's? Well, you know, our goalkeeper probably uh, took too long to get rid of the ball and uh, he was penalised by the referee, which was fair enough. Uh, they put it in the net as, as it happens from the first free kick, but uh, luckily enough, something happened to prevent them getting the, the, the goal and, uh, you know, we cleared the, the result free kick. So, 
That's how it goes sometimes. <laughs> you must feel a bit, though, for your opposite number, I would think, Jerry Summers. Yeah, I do. Because uh, I don't care what anybody says. Um, Jellingham are one of the better footballing sides in the division, uh, which is proved really by the, the last two 